Welcome to Game Fondue Reviews. In this video, we're going to take a look at Carcassonne. Carcassonne was first published in Y2K, the year 2000, and it's turned out to be an incredibly popular tile laying game in which you're just building this big city in Europe. It's pretty neat. First thing we're going to do is go briefly through the rules, and then we'll see a few example turns being played, including a final scoring. Then I'll wrap up with some closing remarks. This is Carcassonne set up for a two-player game. All you really do to set up is you place one of your guys on the scoring track, and you take the rest. Um, you put the starting tile out, and the starting tile has the different color back than the others, so it's really easy to tell the difference. Also, it connects to a field, a road, and a city, which we'll understand the significance of in a second. And the rest of the tiles you just kind of randomize in some stacks to make it real easy to draw them. So on your turn, it always goes in the same order. The first thing you're going to do is draw and place a tile. And then the second thing you're going to do, which is optional, is place one of your meeples on that tile. And last but not least is you will find out what's completed and you will score and take back your guys. So let's first talk about drawing and placing a tile. So you draw a tile. Uh, we got a little road tile here and essentially we just place it. We can't place it here. We can't place it here but we because we must continue what's already on the board. So this road can continue this road. This field can continue this field. So for argument's sake we'll just stick it here. Now we have the option to place one of our meeples. Um, we can place a meeple only on the tile we just played. We don't have to do it, but if we do it, it's got to be on this one. If we uh, wanted to place it on an earlier one, we are out of luck at this time. You also cannot place where somebody already is. So for example, if I'm there and then it's Black's turn and he draws this, he cannot place one of his meeples on that same road because I'm already on that road. He could do something like this and then later try to get the roads to connect, in which case there will be some scoring uh, considerations to keep in mind. But for argument's sake, he can't do that right now. So when you place um, a person, if you're placing on a city, you will place standing up. If you're placing on a road, you will place standing up. Also, there are some cloisters in which you will place standing up on those as well. Um, on any field, though, however, you can lay down. And if that case, you become a farmer. And if you are a farmer, you are there for the rest of the game. You cannot get farmers back. All of the other meeples come back when the segment is completed. So for example, whenever a road comes to two ends, even though these are kind of branching out, they actually count as ends. So if this road ends, and this guy was standing on here, he would be scored, and I would get him back. So that brings us to the third part of the turn, and that is scoring. So in this case, all roads always score one point per tile. One, two, three, four. So that would be four points, which would just move on the track. Um, cities actually score two points per tile during the game and two points per pennant. This is what a pennant looks like. Um, but we're just going to do this for now to make it easy. So this is a four-point city because it's two, two. But if a city's incomplete at the end of the game, you only get one point for each segment. So example, this would be one, two, three, four, and pennant five, because it's not complete and the game is over. Roads are still worth one point per tile at the end of the game. And the last is, of course, the cloister. And the cloister scores points based on the number of things around it. So if you complete it during the game, it's worth nine points because it's completely surrounded. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But if the cloister is incomplete, like in this case, it would score for each tile in its 3x3 three three square. So let's add a couple. This cloister would be worth 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points at game end if it's not uh, complete like so. And the last type of guy is the farmer, and all the farmer scoring happens at the end of the game. The way farm scoring works is at the end of the game for each completed city supplied by that farm or connected to that farm, that player is going to get three points. So in this example, black kind of down here is, is in a farm that supplies no completed cities because this is not complete, so he gets no points. Um, this yellow gentleman, however, is connected to one complete city, so that would be three points. And this one, even better, is connected to two complete cities, so that would be six points. It's also important to note, it, note whenever scoring, um, let's just pretend you couldn't do this now, but let's pretend it happened later, that if this whole group was together, so there's two yellow and one black, yellow would get the full amount of points. In this case, 
six, one for each of these cities, and black would get none, and that applies to every other type of area as well. If, if this city was completed, um, we'll let black win this time. With two black gentlemen on it and, and one yellow gentleman, um, the black would take the full amount of points, which would have been two, four, six, eight, ten. If they split, if they both had the same number of people, they would both share the points. We're getting to our playthrough. Yellow is going to go first, and yellow draws this tile, so he places it, and he's going to stick a guy on the road. Black's turn. He takes this. He's going to go on this city here. Yellow will uh, add to this one. He's going to place a guy on that. Black's turn. Black doesn't want to put this on his own because he's afraid it won't get finished. Um, but if he was to place it here, understand that he cannot put a guy there because there's already a yellow person on that city. So he's going to lay this over here, and he's actually going to use it to farm. So it's Yellow's turn. Yellow's going to do a couple things. Going to close this road, but before scoring takes place, going to place a guy here. So that'll be one, two, three points for that road. He's hoping to connect to this city that Black is in. So Black draws this tile. He wants to stick it somewhere, but it's a little bit tricky, so he's going to put it up here, and, and he's changed his mind. He's going to put on this space now. Yellow's turn. It's a nice little road. Um, he's going to put it over here. And um, that's it for his turn. He's not going to place anybody. So the game continues, and we'll see you at final scoring. We're at the final scoring. The game is complete. So first thing we're going to do is score the uncompleted structures. So right here, yellow has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine point uh, city. Note that it's only one point per tile and per pennant because it's not finished. Over here, these guys share. They're each standing, so they're each going to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points. Next, we have this road here. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six points for yellow. And uh, anybody else standing? Yes, this guy. One, two, three points for black. So the last thing we do is the farms, and that's pretty much really the focus of this part. So first we have to figure out who's in what farming segment. It looks like they're all actually in different segments, which is pretty unusual, but we're going to go with it. So this guy over here is on this side of the road, so he services one city. So that's going to be three times one is three points for yellow. This guy over here, same situation. He's connected to one completed city, so that's three more points for yellow. Um, this guy down here is connected to one, two completed cities. Note that this one is incomplete, so that's six points for yellow. And this guy over here is connected to one, two completed cities, so that's six more points for yellow. Um, Black seems like he did a really good job farming. He, this guy down here is connected to two, so that's six points. This guy over here is connected to one, so that's three points. This guy in the center, is this is not finished. This is not finished, but this one is, so that's three more points for black. This guy is a fantastic farmer. He's connected to two, and that's six points. And last but not least, one, two, three... Any of the others finished nine points for this guy. So Black is the big winner, courtesy of his farmers. And that was Carcassonne. It's a lot of fun seeing uh, you know the city build up over the course of the game, and it's just great how simple the game is. It makes it a great family game. It's people use it in different venues, you know, as a beer and pretzels game and as in a family atmosphere. But uh, it's highly regarded as one of the greatest gateway games. Gateway game meaning a game to introduce new players that may not be as familiar with board games to the hobby or just to the game. Uh, I can't recommend it enough for a group that plays with kids. I recommend it for other groups as well. But with kids in particular, uh, it's just a really good game because it's very easy to understand and it's very neat to just kind of lay out the tiles and, and sort of explore this, this city as it's built. Um, the box says 8 and up, but I think you can stretch that a little. And as an added plus with this game, it's available pretty much everywhere um, because of its vast commercial success and there's like 8,000 expansions for it. Not really that many, but a lot. In fact, um, this is kind of an older version, but newer versions tend to come with the mini expansion, The River, which is just a river that goes through the city of Carcassonne. So if you haven't played this one, you gotta check it out. That's Carcassonne. Thanks for watching.